Greetings Sagittarius, welcome to your July 2021 reading with me. Hey thank you guys for deciding to join, taking the time out in your busy days to sit and listen to some of the messages that are coming your way. We have crossed the threshold of the halfway mark of the year, although I am doing this reading on the 16th of June. So that's only <laughs> just, just halfway through the year, literally. We have just come out of the eclipses. The last one was on the 10th of June. That was the annular eclipse. And it was the partnership to the big super moon blood eclipse on the 26th of May. These eclipses have, have a lot of intensive energy in them and they are bringing in change, much, much change. But I feel that the whole of the 2020s is a decade of change that is pushing us into the cusp of new beginnings of where time is moving to and where we are evolving as humans. So for some people it may feel quite tempestuous or discombobulating like as if you are losing control of something and part of that is also related to the big planets that are moving in the outer fields and especially Saturn who is the Lord of Karma. And he can often be attributed to karmic debts being paid down. So if we have had lots of learning to experience in this lifetime for whatever choice we chose to experience, you can feel a lot of that moving through the energy fields at the moment as well. And that can be adding to this feeling of uh, floating, of not being grounded, of not being sure about the future or even what's going on in the here and now. And some of that we could even put down to perhaps the whole COVID experience because Gaia is also going through the same things that we do because she's us, <laughs> we are her. So there's no differentiation between the experiences that we're having and she's also going through. So if you think about it laterally, what we are experiencing as a species or humanity here, she also is going through her own evolutionary changes. So these are the cusp of times of immense change and they are progression steps that are taking us forward as I say into the cusp of evolution and we will never be the same again. So if any of you are feeling tense or anxious or uncertain or worried about the changes coming in a little bit of letting go can be very supportive and just saying to yourself it is what it is and it is the new way forward, it is the new me, this is the new life. So those can be sort of supportive energy fields or wavelengths that help you transition into great changes. I don't know where all that came from but it must be needed to be heard somewhere out there for the people who are listening. I did get the intuitive feeling that you guys, and this is happening for a lot of people, this message is coming up, to spend more time on earth grounded and outdoors with nature particularly forests or trees, big trees, you know, they give us so much grounded energy. And when we're grounded, we don't feel fear and we don't feel panic or tension or that flight mode, you know, that like fear and fight and flight. So you gain more security, more stability, you have more of a home feeling, your homes can be more stable, your job can be more stable, your soul tribe, your family, all of those things benefit by a firm gift of grounded practicality and feeling stable and safe within grounding. So that was a message that came for you. Now we will be using these three decks of cards, this is a full tarot, this is a star tarot deck, this is the energy oracle cards by Sandra and Taylor and this is a chakra insight healing oracle deck. I don't know if any of you will watch the Scorpio reading, I did it yesterday and it was a very <laughs> interesting interactive reading, there was some wild energy in the house, it was at least one spirit energy that wanted to be heard and wanted to be inter engaged with the reading it's quite an interesting one to listen to so whether you have any Scorpio people in your life or you have any rising or moon signs take a listen to that 
Uh, everyone suggested to clear the house after the reading, which I have done, but to be fair, and that's <laughs> a bit of a pun, I was going to say there is no need for fear when you get situations like that because in reality the light always wins over any dark energy or angry energies and in essence they just want to be heard one way or another or they have a message that they're trying to get across. So. Today the house feels much calmer, I'm still here on my own, I still have the pets around. It's a happier, sunnier day outside and there is sun flowing into the room. So we'll see how your reading goes and we will start with now. I will move these cards away to the side and we will pull these out. This is for Sagittarius. What is it in store you would like them to look at? There's quite a few that have all jumped out together so I will use them all. Well, the Hermit, Big Major Arcana, the Knight of Coins, the King of Swords, and the Six of Wands, and now one has just fallen onto the floor, which I will pick up, the Queen of Cups. So all of these four here are court cards. Now, interestingly enough, I think Scorpio had a lot of court, court cards yesterday. Perhaps July is a time where people are reconnecting or seeing family or that there's people on their minds. Now the court cards don't always have to resemble just people, they can resemble situations or energies. So what I'm noticing here is we have this major arcana card and it's the hermit with the yellow border which represents your solar plexus chakra area. This is in a strength or strength even of physical type in your body or regaining strength. But the Hermit is also about going within and realizing some prowess or inner strength of the mind. So possibly gaining insights or expanding some understanding or awareness that you currently have and you are listening to it or you are meditating on it or you are working with it. But it could also be that something is regaining a strength within your mindscape. So it could be that you are finding inner strength again after a period of feeling doubt or a period of worry or anxiety or something along those lines. Now the Hermit also traditionally says it's time out or time alone. So there's a complete juxtaposition or a dichotomy because this person would normally represent time alone and yet look at all this, all of these people surrounding you. So possibly they're on your mind, or maybe you have separated yourself from these people somehow. So this can often be considered a pentacles person, an air sign person, a fire sign, and a water. So you've got every single representation of energies within these people as well, including your own, which is, sorry, which is the six of wands. So therein, I will just correct myself, I was thinking of her as a court card, and in fact she is the Six of Wands. Perhaps it's the colour palette that picked my mind up here and made me feel that these were all court cards, but even if I remove her out of there, we still have three court cards, and more interestingly to me is this colour palette that is going on. This is the throat chakra, this is the third eye chakra, and these are the crown chakra up here. So we're dealing with this really high part of the chakra system, not so much the physical, which we were talking about earlier when we, when we are grounded, but we're talking more about the metaphysical chakra wheels, the alignment to the psychic self, to the awareness or the consciousness or the expansion of the universe, and that's exactly what the hermit actually does as well, as, as I was just saying. So even though there feels some dichotomy going on, there also feels a thread of movement in here that they are meant to be together somehow, even if in reality they are separated. Perhaps there is some merging or coming together through a thought field or a dynamic or something that you're thinking about that will initiate uh, some sort of contact or reunion or communication with this bunch of cards here. Again, it could be an earth sign person, it could be an air sign, and it could be a water sign. It could also be fire sign, but perhaps this is yourself. Now the Six of Wands cards often represents victory, you know, like success. This is a card that is often heralded as you've made it, you've crossed the line, something 
positive and bountiful has happened, but often with the help of other people. So perhaps these other people have ha helped you get to this position in life, and some of you could be literally being receiving an award or some sort of accolade or acknowledgement of success that you have done over a period of time, and these people may play a role in it. So interesting bunch of cards for you to get. I'm thinking that a lot of you will be thinking in this month of July, that, that, that you will go deep within the mind, there will be periods of introspection, of philosophical and esoteric expansion of your mind and concepts of your life. Now these court cards could represent issues. Now the Knight of Coins is often about the slow moving, because of course the pentacles are the slowest of them all, but slow moving events to do with your money or finances or investments. And it could be that it's the beginning of an idea or concept that you have. And sometimes for some people this means a new job offer or a change in the way you are dealing with money or the way money is coming to you. The King of Swords is often known as an ideas or concept person. He's thinking again, so we've got more thought, and especially in these two cards. So he could be amalgamating something or offering a proposition, or there could be some sort of uh, contract coming, or something to do with written or verbal communication that you are working on. The Queen of Cups, well, she's about the heart and emotions and love, sometimes referred to relationships, but she can also be... A person or an energy who is backing you or supporting you or that there is something that you are passionate about in your life and it might be that this has led to this victory card as well. Let's pull a few more to see where the cards and the story is actually taking us. It's certainly a interesting color palette that's for sure. I wouldn't have normally thought that the Knight of Coins being the blue, which is the throat chakra, it wouldn't normally come to my mind as blue because he's much more grounded and I would have thought of him as having a red um, colour palette. But again, maybe there is communication needed in this concept around your finances or a potential job offer or an application or something you are thinking of. Wow, the Queen of Coins. So we did get four uh, court cards in the end, and there may even be more yet. Let's see what this one is. The Six of Coins. Do you see how interesting the colour palette is? So it's really up in your mind. In your mind's eye, are you connecting with your higher self? Are you connecting with your spiritual freedom or a spiritual understanding or attainment or awareness or growth or situation somehow? I remember when I said at the beginning that being grounded and back down on earth would be very beneficial for you. It's lovely to be up here in this place or this space of, you know, wild, dreamlike, etheric, expanded consciousness. I love being there. It's somewhere that I often spend time. And I've been told by many people I need to come back down to earth and be grounded. And so that's the feeling I get with this reading. There is a desire or a need to come back and ground yourself back down again and form some solid roots somewhere or, or become um, not stable I don't mean that but become um, and I was going to say bound but those are the wrong words I can't find the right word to put in here at the moment it's just to become not afraid of of being grounded on earth you know we can still obtain so much especially in the here and now all of this stuff is often about well it's the here and now but it's also the future and it's it's time it's distance it's timelines it's the past the present the future it's more the mind than the physical aspect of the body the queen of coins she seems to be with her protege here, the knight of coins, that's another one possibly about money or finances. I see the Leo looking lion on this card and I always think of Leos as well when we talk with this card, when those uh, symbols turn up. So perhaps a Leo person might be represented in this somehow. But again, she is about money, finances, things coming together, uh, stability of that. 
the grounded feeling of the pentacles suite indeed and then we have another good pentacles card the six of coins this is the cycle of give and take in life this is receiving or giving money and this will be a time in your life whether you are either receiving and it can be receiving these accolades you know receiving acknowledgement or accommodation or the gifts of gratitude from others or even from yourself especially as you move into this type of energy over here with the hermit card but it can also be about giving to others and giving in turn of having received something and when we are in balance in life and we are fully immersed in the giving and receiving cycles then manifestation of everything comes so much easier to us so this can be a time of manifestation and certainly your pentacles cards that you have received have all been this beautiful harmony and positivity these three in particular are very very good so it's interesting again to have two more of those uh, third eye or crown chakra some of you are literally being illuminated or opened up this month in the month of July and any time from when you listen to this June even and here we are with another of the same color palette this is a very interesting read so the moon is playing a role and indeed as I said we've just come out of the eclipses so I think the eclipses may have had a really big effect on you guys and they might be pulling at your whole spiritual concepts or constructs in life and they may be making you really think about your situations and what you want to to do as the future unravels I don't mean unravels I mean unfolds before us unraveling sounds like it's out of control so the moon is also about our emotions it's about our emotional perspective our inner psyche again and the inner us is there something that you want to deal with is there something that you are wanting to find out or or answer to or expand on I feel this reading is actually a lot about yourself and how you feel about life or where you want to go as we broach the second half of 2021 even though these might be individual people who are in your life or people who you are thinking about or who play a role somehow in the decisions you're making perhaps you have singled yourself out from them and are wanting to gain insight into how you really would like to go without their input or without their total dominion over you so that's one of the most interesting readings I've ever seen in terms of a color palette and the chakra energies talking to us the moon can also represent things hidden at night like a night agenda doing things undercover secretive events or discussions or promotions or contracts or liaisons it can be about working at night it can be about dream time in particular so dreamscape and that's an activating that whole mind again and this whole reading is broaching through the mind concepts or constructs it can also be about dealing with water sign people and interestingly enough this has set itself under a water sign card up here so it could be about cancer or scorpio is usually who i think about with the moon card not so much piscean people but it could involve some of these people anything a dealings that you are doing with one way or another and you're keeping it a little bit on the down low or it it might not be fully emerged yet sometimes the moon can can insinuate three people being involved so sometimes this can turn up when there's something a little bit you know not stable going on in the background like a like an affair or three people involved in a close relationship and the third person might be yourself or you might be involved with um two other people and you're trying to figure out is this the right thing do i want this is this for me yada yada all these questions going on so I will leave you to ponder that exactly where it's hitting you and what the meanings are and the intensity of it. I feel for some of you this will go really, really deep and it is about your mind and your thoughts and your directives and it could be tied into these eclipses which will just further impact you as the months move on 
from the actual height of the eclipse. It's a little bit like if you think of a pebble dropping in a pond, the initial pebble dropped in, which is when the exact eclipse is, is really powerful and it's an amazing sight to see. But from that pebble dropping in, the ripples continue to ripple out and actually the ripples can become stronger and bigger and bigger. And that's the effect the eclipse has. As the weeks wear on, these effects can become more pronounced and more uh, profound as opposed to being subtle. So I feel this could be coming for you guys as you move through July and into the rest of the year. So we'll put these aside over here because sometimes we do call on them again. Another thing to think of is oftentimes when we have such a, um, a limited color palette coming through in terms of the colors that are missing from here. So we're missing the base chakra, we're missing the sacral chakra, we're missing the heart chakra. So we've got the crown chakra and we have the throat chakra and we have the third eye and the yeah and the solar plexus so you're missing three but there's this heavy weightedness up at the very top end of you so I do think a balance is required a physicality balance and a you know opening up that bottom half of the base chakra or the chakra areas and allowing some sort of flow to come through because when we have full flow from the base chakra right up to the crown chakra then we can feel the subtlety and the power of all of those emotional threads and spiritual threads and physical ones all connected together and we become innately stronger at every level so let's see what the next lot of cards are for you guys this is for Sagittarius for July Envy. Envy's been out a little bit too and so has the broken heart. Envy can come from yourself but it can also come from others around you who might be envious of what you have, what you're doing, what you've got, what you stand for. That card actually does depict from this deck a little bit of envy from the lady so that would generally be yourself con considered. She actually has everything in her life if you look at the surrounding she is opulently dressed and she lives in a rather grand place even she's actually dressed in all silver you know quite a beautiful robe and she has uh, looks like pearls on a container and she is in a very well-off position but for some reason she sees what's out beyond her life as being more enviable than what she has so she's not looking clearly at everything that she has got in her own life and that's what can bring envy in like feeling as though you are lacking and we did see a lack in terms of these chakra energy fields over here so again it might just be about bringing balance in to understand all that you do have in your life because you do and Sagittarians often do um, you know you experience a whole raft of power and energy and insight and often particularly in the esoteric and spiritual realm you have this potential to grasp things and to fully be aware of concepts and you're wonderful debaters and philosophers and um, wordsmiths and travelers of life which might be why some of you don't settle down that much you can often be a wanderer at heart my dear dad was a Sagittarian and I loved him deeply and he was a most wonderful wonderful man I miss him very much actually he's been gone quite some time now but he had this wonderful calm peaceful energy about him and you know back when he was born which was a long long time ago he often trialed or thought of the more unique philosophies in life and he picked them up and he looked into them he wasn't afraid to to experience things that at the time were not considered acceptable by society and that is often how Sagittarians can be so envy technically isn't something that needs to be in your life because you can experience so many different aspects aspects of it within yourself but the broken heart has popped in so I'm not sure what that resembles at this point that can mean a broken heart from emotional trauma or loss a sadness um, it can mean the ending of a relationship or 
uh, missing someone that you're away from. It can also mean a physical heart issue with yourself or possibly someone around you as well. So it's a really good time to get heart checkups done, you know, just with whatever, whoever, whether it's natural health or uh, herbal remedies, keeping a good diet, plenty of rest, sleep and exercise, or whether you actually go and get blood tests done to see cholesterol and a blood pressure and things like that, they can be all beneficial. The thinking woman, that's Sagittarians, very much thinking. And we're back with the very first card again, which was our hermit, that is the thinker. So twice we're being given the concept of thinking. So what is on your mind, Sagittarians, and what is it you are doing? I also note she seems very literary, and she has a book there. She has lots of books, and scroll down here. Remember I said the scroll can sometimes be uh, like receiving an award or getting a degree, and that's what the Six of Wands can often represent as well, that you have become, you know, you've finished your degree, and you've, you've reached this point of success. And you can literally, some of you may have attended a ceremony where you've got your degree. In fact, it was capping day here not long ago in New Zealand, in Takapuna. And I spent the day, well, it was capping week, and I spent a few days helping my daughter-in-law at her cafe with all the wonderful celebrations of the people getting their uh, university degrees and their actual capping day and it's such a wonderful celebration to be part of and to experience. Boom, action. That to me is like the chariot card, that's movement, that's uh, shifting, sometimes moving home, moving location, being in a different location, going on a holiday, sometimes traveling by car, Definitely experiencing the outdoors, the fields, the trees, very grounded energy, of course, a horse. But the, these horses also represent the spiritual ethos of life, because this is yin and yang, male and female, black and white, and that's understanding the cosmic force of life, the, the, the more uh, expanded constructs of action as opposed to the physicality of it. So who knows which way that's leading you as well, but some of you could be moving, shifting. Some of you could be taking action or regaining action or feeling inspired to act after a time of the hermit. Here we are back with the throat chakra, the blue again. So even more blue. And we've got honesty. Someone is saying to you, be honest about something. Show your truth and have transparency and have some sincerity and open communication so we saw the communication with this card here in particular the blue but other than that that was really the only blue that you got but we talked a little bit about um, openness and transparency with the moon because sometimes there might be some something you're hiding from or hiding when the moon comes out so some of you may be keeping something secret about yourself or a situation and that you'd like it to be more open or you're wanting communication to come out either with yourself or with someone else. So this is a possibility as well. You can meditate upon that card and see how you yourself can open your throat chakra and what is it you want to say or be heard or to speak about. She holds that key to opening that aspect of her and I find it really interesting that we're still up in that area of the body for you guys when we've spent so long in there in the first half of the uh, relationship of the reading this one is your sacral chakra so we're getting ourselves down a little bit with one card although we're so weighted with these other ones up here but this is enjoyment beauty sensuality and indulgence and it's called pleasure so it might be a good card to finish on and remember that pleasure and taking the time out to honor yourself and to enjoy life in the moment, in the day. And, you know, she is just happy. She's sitting there with something pleasurable to drink, whether it be healthy or not. Uh, she's taking some time out. She's resting. She has her eyes closed as if she's daydreaming. I think she is sitting next to the base of a big tree. I'm not sure if this is a waterfall over here, 
um, this is a bit of a crocodile down here so remember to be in the moment of giving yourself pleasure and enjoyment and and a bit of indulgence which is usually some time out from chores or from work or from you know feeling the pressure of life or the pace of things to do and again in many ways that brings us back to that very first card which must have been so important the hermit card she is also there on her own in in essence and the chakras are similar they're sacral chakra and solar plexus so they're working together and creating sort of a harmony of strength but also a relaxation that comes with it so I think for you guys maybe this time out could be relieving yourself from the pressures of life or from the busy hustle and bustle of other people's demands and maybe that's something that you need to think of and perhaps that's possibly a little bit of what the speaking was all about that did you want time alone did you need time out did you want to take time away from everyone else's rah 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 you know and blah blah, blah listen to me I need I need I need I want is it more about you just going no I want, I need, this is me, this is my time. So I do think it is a month very much for yourself and where you come from after that, I think you will be quite different because I can see that the eclipses are playing a role in your whole thinking process and your spiritual evolution. So there you are Sagittarians, thanks for joining me, quite an interesting read for you, uh, something to ponder upon for sure and I wish you all much pleasure and enjoyment and you know peaceful serenity over the month of July and that may you find your successes of which there are many to be had, especially in this potential financial sector as well, may you find them fulfilling and satisfying. Thank you for subbing the channel being part of Team Celestial, liking the video, leaving your comments, and I wish you all much love. Namaste.